All right, so we're going to start chapter two in bio 105. So for this chapter, this chapter deals with chemistry, and chemistry is the study of matter. Now, we're not going to get into a whole lot of depth here in this class. We're really only going to hit two subjects uh, uh, in this class because these are themes that are going to show up uh, again and again throughout the semester. Okay, so the first is looking at pH. Now, pH is whether we're looking at something uh, is an acid or base. Okay, so if we go to uh, this picture here, so an acid is a substance that releases hydrogen ions in a solution. So if you took um, an acid like hydrochloric acid and you put it into water, it would separate into hydrogen ions and chloride ions. And those hydrogen ions are what give acids its properties. So, you know, uh, acids, uh, you know, strong acid can cause a burn on you. Uh, you know, uh, they taste, acids taste sour to us, right? Oh, by the way, an ion is a charged particle. So it's an atom or group of atoms that has gained or lost an electron. Once again, it's, we can talk more about that uh, in your chemistry class. Next is a base. A base is a substance that uh, releases hydroxide ions in a solution. So here's showing hydrogen ions, this is showing hydroxide ions. A hydroxide ion is an oxygen and a hydrogen together, and together they have a negative charge. So if you took a common acid like sodium hydroxide and you place that into water, it would separate into sodium ions and also into hydroxide ions, okay? So when we look at a pH scale, and a pH scale is a scale that measures the hydrogen ion concentration of a solution. This is trying to show the scale. The scale goes from zero uh, to 14, all right? Uh, where seven is neutral, uh, below seven is an acid, above seven is a base, all right? And this is on orders of magnitude, just to let you know. So meaning that uh, a two is 10 times more acidic than a pH of three, and a three is 10 times more acidic than four, so two is 100 times more acidic than four, it's 1,000 times more acidic than five. Same thing on the other end here, so 12 is 10 times more acidic than 11, 11 is 10 times more acidic, or er, uh, sorry, sorry, basic. 12 is 10 times more basic than 11, uh, 11 is 10 times more basic than 10, so 12 is 100 times more basic than 10, okay? Now, if we took water and we put water, uh, what will happen with water? Water will separate into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions, and it'll work its way back into H2O. All right, so we'll do this all the time. But what the thing to note about here is that the number of hydroxide ions and the number of hydrogen ions is the same. So pure water is a neutral solution, all right? So when we say that something is basic, we're saying it has more hydroxide ions than hydrogen ions, and we're saying something is acidic, it has more hydrogen ions than it does hydroxide ions. Now, just to let you know, uh, pure, uh, so our blood pH is 7.4, all right? Uh, so it's slightly basic, right? And here's the thing about this, is that if we get to eight, we're dead. If we get that to 6.8, we're dead. That's our homeostatic range, is very narrow in maintaining this. Now, uh, so a little, uh, I don't think I have the chemical equation here for you, but if you took carbon dioxide and water, mix those together, what you create with that is carbonic acid, all right? Now we know we produce carbon dioxide, so our blood uh, has carbonic acid in it. And so the main way that we regulate our body's pH, our blood's pH, is just by breathing. If our blood is getting too acidic, we exhale out more carbon dioxide, thus getting rid of more carbonic acid, uh, so our blood becomes more basic then. If our blood is getting more basic, we, we slow down our respiratory rate, so we keep more carbon dioxide in us, so we keep uh, more our carbonic acid, and so that makes our blood more acidic then. And so that's how we regulate our blood pH. And it's something you're not even gonna notice that your heart, uh, breathing rate went from 12 breaths a minute to 15 breaths a minute or back down. But you do notice this when you uh, exercise. So, oh, one other thing, right? So you might notice here, cola, beer, those are on here. Wine would be on here as well. All carbonated beverages are acidic because of that carbonic acid. All right, now let's take a look at uh, biomolecules. So biomolecules are the molecules of life. 
All right, so we have four biomolecules, carbohydrates, uh, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. So let's take a look at the first of these, and those are carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are molecules made of sugars. So the simplest carbohydrates are monosaccharides, and these are showing a couple of monosaccharides. Monosaccharides, mono means one, saccharide means sugar, so they're simple sugars. So glucose is one of these, fructose is another one of these. All right, glucose is really important. Uh, this is our blood sugar. So this is the main molecule cells uh, break down for energy. And I'm not just talking about our cells, I'm talking about all living organisms. That's a main molecule. All living organisms break down for energy, okay? So if we, uh, oh, uh, one of the things about uh, these monosaccharides is this shows the, uh, all these carbons being linear. A lot of times these guys will form these ring structures. So this is what we see. And so these are trying to show these glucose molecules as well. But if we take a couple of monosaccharides and we put those together, we're gonna make a disaccharide. So this one, uh, so a disaccharide is made of two monosaccharides or two simple sugars. This is showing maltose. Maltose is two glucose molecules. Uh, so if you ever have a malt, uh, they're putting this sugar in that. Uh, this is showing sucrose, which is a glucose and a fructose. Sucrose is regular table sugar. Now, if you take a lot of glucose molecules together, uh, you make a polysaccharide. And so polysaccharides are made of chains of glucose molecules. And so here we're seeing one glucose molecule after the next. So this next picture is showing the three most common types of polysaccharides. The one up here at the top is starch. And starch is used by plants for energy storage. So, uh, you know, like a potato, it's pretty much nothing but starch in there. It's just storing energy, all right? So the next one is cellulose. Now you can see cellulose, one glucose molecule after the next. So glu uh, cellulose is used by plants in their cell walls, all right? So uh, this makes for hard, rigid structure, that cellulose. So it protects the plant cells and it also gives their um, plant cells their shape. Now, you notice starch is one glucose molecule after the next and so is cellulose. The thing about cellulose though, is cellulose is not digestible by animals. So we don't produce enzymes, we're gonna talk about enzymes here sh soon enough, but we don't produce enzymes to break down cellulose. All right, so anything that eats a lot of plant matter has uh, bacteria, microbes in their gut uh, to break down that cellulose so they can get energy from it. All right, uh, we don't have those uh, microbes in us, so I'm talking about like a cow or something like that, okay? So here's the thing, like, if we eat something uh, that has a lot of cellulose on it, uh, we can see those things later on. So uh, like uh, if you eat some corn. Now corn is a seed, and a seed is a plant embryo with an energy source, which is starch, and around that it has a protective cellulose covering, all right? And the only way to get through that protective cellulose covering is to chew through that. Right, because once it passes our mouth, there's nothing in our digestive tract to break down that cellulose. And so this is why, you know, if you don't chew your corn, you may see it up later on. Uh, you know, kind of like this picture here. And you're like, oh my God, Mr. Egger, you just made me look at this picture. I did, I did. Look, again, yeah, don't do that. So anyway, the last polysaccharide is glycogen. So glycogen is used by animals uh, for carbohydrate storage, right? So uh, we store glycogen in our muscle cells and we also store it in our liver, okay? So this is short uh, energy supply, so quick energy, right? So in our muscles, right, if we need energy, each one of these is a glucose molecule, so if we need some energy, we just chop off a glucose, use it for energy. Chop off a glucose, use it for energy. We store it in our liver because uh, in between meals, we will break down glycogen into glucose and release that glucose into our blood to keep our blood glucose levels uh, normal in between meals. 